wrong. We tend to leave out one very important thing, and that is the fallen, wicked nature of mankind in his flesh. Mankind becoming a god in his mortal body will not be a good thing. It won't. Look at this article called The Energy Roadmap. IBM's vision of a smart planet expects sensors and software to launch era of smart infrastructure. Mark your calendars. The business case for smart infrastructure has been made by one of the world's biggest companies. On November 6, IBM CEO Sam Palmisano delivered a speech at the New York Council of Foreign Relations. Hmm, imagine that. Palmisano highlighted Big Blue's vision of a smart planet and the tremendous near-term opportunities in building out that global smart infrastructures for energy, water, information, transportation of people and goods. By the way, this is not just about being smart. It's about control. It is the, this is why this was done on the Council of Foreign Relations. This is about controlling every single thing that happens on the planet through this smart infrastructure. The Gaia syndrome is what it's called. Palmasano echo division described by visionaries and futurists, futurists long ago of a digital planet. Now we might expect broader endorsements for smart infrastructure by mainstream businesses and policy leaders, especially in the United States, under the Obama administration. We can also build more reliable forecasts and roadmaps based on expectations for investments. Remember, money is a big part of this. And application of technologies that improve, flow, that improve the flow of traffic, uh, more efficient energy grids, wider access to clean water and food, improved personal safety, and more secure information flows around financial governance and health care. Informa health care information. See, that's interesting because part of the, not part of the health care bill, part of the stimulus package that was passed by Obama in the Congress last year had, to, had a thing in it where there was all the medical records were going to be digitized, interconnected. And this is the goal of the New World Order. Uh, here's quotes from Palmasano's address. What's making this possible? Number one, our world is becoming instrumented. There will likely be 4 billion mobile phone subscribers by the end of this year and 30 billion radio frequency identification tags produced globally within two years. Sensors are being embedded across entire ecosystems, supply chains, healthcare networks, cities, even natural systems like rivers. By the way, articles coming out this week that in some states it's against the law for you to collect rainwater because now the new law the new paradigms the new laws are gaining control of every drop of water that exists in the United States of America how they're going to do it electronically second our world is becoming interconnected very soon there will be two billion people on the internet but in an instrumented world systems and objects can now speak to one another too. Think about the prospect of a trillion connected and intelligent things. Cars, appliances, cameras, roadways, pipelines, even pharmaceuticals and livestock. Third, all things are becoming intelligent. New computing models can handle the proliferation of end-user devices, sensors and actuators and connect them with back-end systems. Combined with advanced analytics, those supercomputers can turn mountains of data into intelligence that can be translated into action, making our systems, processes, and infrastructures more efficient, more productive, and responsive, in a word, smarter. Imagine that. Not just, I mean, you've got a cell phone. It wasn't until just a few years ago that I got a cell phone. My wife got a cell phone. She wanted one because she traveled back and forth a lot to work. She wanted something to get in touch with me in case a car broke down or something like that. And it was a bag phone. You remember those? I mean, this big bag you carried around, you stuck in your car, and you picked up the receiver, and like, it was a monster. Now these things are teeny tiny, and they're getting smaller every day. And now nearly 2 billion people in the very near future are going to be carrying something like this around, communicating one with another. Social networking is another thing. I mean, we are, we are literally changing the landscape, landscape of humanity right now with all of this technology. Now, somebody sent me this. They said that their son works for Microsoft and he was, uh, this is not some super, super secret project they're working on. The video is on YouTube. It's called the Natal Project. 
which actually is the natal project. The word natal means birth. And I want you to think about something being birthed into this world, a new world order. He favors the birth of a new world order. That's the Natal project. And I want you to listen to the beginning of this because this is something we've been working on for years and it's going to come out, I think this November, uh, with the Xbox game systems. And I've got something to say about that here in a little bit. But I want you to listen to the guy as he introduces this Natal project and listen to the words that he's using to describe this. Take a listen to this. You know, I, I want to just say one thing to you, and that's the word interactive. Surely we've been making interactive games for 20 years, haven't we? Well, 30 years. Well, no, I don't think we have. Because that thing in our hands, that thing that's evolved in our hands, it got more and more complex, it got more and more buttons, actually has been the biggest barrier to what we want to create. Because what we want to create is a connection to our worlds. And that's what I believe Natal does. And what, if you leave with uh, anything today, then leave with this thought. What designers and what this industry does with Natal will change the landscape of games that we play. Notice he's talking about the, the way we interface with these game machines, which are computers, has evolved. He's talking about the world that we are creating. And then he talks about the ability to connect the machine world with the human world. Now this is, I mean, it's an interesting thing that they were showing in this video was this new way of interfacing with this computer called an Xbox where instead of, you know, I go back to the 80s and I had one of these Atari joysticks and it went forward, backward, left and right and it had a fire button. And I thought, this is so cool, okay? Uh, this year for Christmas, I bought myself one of the newer, what I call the newer uh, joysticks and this thing has way too many buttons on it for me and I'm using both hands and I don't know how to operate the stupid thing so I haven't used it since then um, we have a Wii system at home and uh, you take the little thing in your hand and you swing it and this little radar thing picks up your motion but now now the connect project it's called don't you think about that the connect project you don't need anything like that at all you just move and the computer knows because now they have the ability to see you. They can see your face, recognize it. They can recognize your speech. They can probably even at some point be able to read your lips without you, being able, without you saying anything. They will, they're getting smarter and smarter every day. And this has to do with the connection of the two worlds or the fusion of mankind. This is one step closer to the fusion of mankind with electronics. And it's going to allow it's going to allow men to become gods. Now, I want to show you a clip now from a video that somebody sent me called Technocalypse. And this video it, it's kind of scary, but this video, there's a guy here talking about the singularity and the fusion of electronics and humanity transforming men into gods. And I want you to listen to what he says. He's talking about not only does he want to become a god, but listen to what he says about his own personal godhood. Take a listen. We are going to become gods. Period. If you don't like it, get off. You don't have to contribute. You don't have to participate. Well, if you're going to interfere with me becoming God, you're going to have big trouble. Then we'll have warfare. The only way you can prevent me in this, in this 50 or is to kill me. If you kill me, I'll kill you. If you try to stop him, there will be a war those who are pushing this godhood agenda and this didn't just come up in the last five years this goes all the way back to the beginning I believe the Bible has the all the answers even now you'll not find the word cell phone in the Bible but what you will find is this concept of why men want to become gods and who is behind the conspiracy. Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field